Uh, my name is Kerry Russell. I have a master's degree in landscape ecology. So now we find ourselves up on a very high spot that has very, very sandy soil, very dry. Whereas a minute ago we took a look at the post oak, which admittedly was on a dry site, but it was still on a slope. And the further and further uphill we went away from the influence of the water from the creek, we come up to the top to where we have the least amount of water and it's very exposed, which means there's a high evaporation right here just due to the exposure and the heat of the sun. And the species that we find when we get up here is the blue jack oak. The blue jack oak is a part of the red oak group. Unlike the white oaks, like the post oak that we saw earlier, the fingernail has a very, very hard time penetrating the, the, the bark of a red oak. Okay? Other examples of oaks that fall into the red oak group are uh, the live oak, uh, the, uh, the cherry bark oak, the southern red oak. Maybe, maybe some of you know examples like that. The other thing is that when you look at the leaf, the leaf of the blue jack oak does not have lobes. This could be said to have very shallow lobes or small lobes, but the main thing that I want you to notice is that what you find at the end of these are pointed tips. And that's the thing that makes it also fall under the category of the red oak group. White oak group had rounded soft tips. This has very pointed tips. The main thing I'd like for people to remember though is the relationship that this has with the habitat with this very, very dry, droughty, exposed, nutrient-poor site.